Chapter 8. Kyle finds me at the seal's pool, hanging on the railing and staring down into the deep, into the deep blue pool. The seals are splashing back and forth, energetic this time of day. In a while, they'll crawl up on a stone and bask in the sun, growing warm and heavy and sleepy. They crane their heads and look at me every time they swim past, but I'm not carrying any fish for them this time. There's a legend, you know, Kyle says, that seals carry the souls of drowned fishermen. See how human their eyes look? I stare at the creatures playing in front of us. Their eyes are big and brown, warm and trusting. They remind me of Leda. Wide and open, innocent, too innocent. It makes me want to grab them and run off and hide them away somewhere before the universe grabs a stick and clubs them on the head, because that's what it always, always does. Who was that guy, a boyfriend? No. So who? My brother. Oh, Luke? Luke? You know, Leia and Luke? Yeah, well, yeah. You guys don't look much alike. We're twins, just like Princess Leia and Luke. Well, that explains it, he grins, and he's not Brian, and there's no wall of poisoned air, and for a second, the world shimmers into normal, and I want to grin, too. Is he the one you're running away from, your brother? I push myself farther over the railing and stretch toward the water. There's no way I'd ever reach the water unless I actually fall in, but still I stretch, farther and farther. No. Who are you running away from? I don't know. A bad guy? Bad, I whisper to the seal straining out of the water toward me. The zoo seems smaller now, a tiny oasis in shark-infested waters. I can't run away. I can't get away. I stand upright again and feel dizzy. Clench my hands around the cool metal railing. What's the most deadly animal in the zoo, I ask. Kyle shrugs. I don't know. Guess. There are plenty of dangerous animals. The tigers, of course. The bears, even. The rhinos. The elephants, if enraged. But there are tiny ones, too. Piranhas, poisonous snakes, or spiders. And, of course, chimps. Like Tina, they can be dangerous if they want to be. If they're scared or angry. What would be the most painful death? You ask weird questions, Leia. I shake my head hard. My hair falls over my face, warm from the sun, smelling of flowers, the shampoo from the staff showers. I rub my eyes, my hair across my eyes. Okay, what's the most pain-free death then? If you had to be killed by something in the zoo, what would you choose? Kyle hooks his arms over the railing, thinking an interested look on his face. Well, not the snakes or spiders. The poison can be very painful. So is getting ripped apart by a tiger or a bear, I suppose. Unless you go straight for the throat. I suppose that would be quick. Most of the time, anyway. I mean, they could decide to snack on your limbs first, and then dig into your liver, which would be less pain-free, I suppose. What about constrictor snakes? You'd pass out, right? From the lack of oxygen. You'd just fall asleep. Get choked to death, get your ribs broken, and then get eaten in one bite, and your murderer will probably choke on you? Charming. Help me out here. What should we planning? A suicide or a murder? If you want to kill someone by throwing them into an animal cage, what cage would you choose? This conversation's freaking me out. I'm just wondering. Kyle sighs. Well, the tiger's the bear, I guess. Why? They've got the biggest teeth, less chance of failure, and they're expected to kill. Some of the other animals, if they harmed a person, they might be put down because they're too much of a risk. I kneel and retie my shoelaces, carefully wrap one lace around the other, and finish with a double bow. Come on, I say, let's go visit the tigers. For once, I lead, and Kyle's the one trailing behind. The tigers lie in shade under the trees, dozing, looking more like cuddly pets than wild killing machines. If I go inside, would they eat me? Not sure they'd eat you. They're spoiled. They're used to their meat landing on the ground in front of them. But they might attack you. They're not used to people inside their habitat. Nobody goes there except Dylan. They might kill you or at least do serious injury. Why? They get plenty of food. Why would they kill me? He shrugs. It's their nature. They're predators. If something's alive and kicking, they must hunt. I hook my fingers into the netting, reach through a broken link in the fence, but the second fence is out of reach by several inches. I imagine a tiger strolling up the net, sitting back and reaching through it with a giant paw extending a claw to meet my outstretched finger. Our eyes would meet and we'd stare into each other's souls and realize we didn't want to kill each other. Not today. Is the white tiger a separate species or an albino or something? Neither. It's due to a recessive gene. For a tiger to be white, a cub needs to get that gene from both parents, so it's very rare. In danger of extinction? I think so. Maybe we need to feed them more humans. We're not in any danger of extinction. He chuckles, but I'm not making a joke. Some people deserve to be tiger food. I let go of the netting and turn around. What if you wanted to get rid of a body? Kyle groans. Are you obsessed with this? Theoretically, let's say you kill a guy and you need to get rid of the body. Which animal would make the body disappear the best? He frowns. I don't think our PR person ever gets such questions. Well, what do you think? The tigers or the bears might eat a dead body if it were fresh. You know, it's just like another pack of meat thrown their way. Not sure they'd feast if the corpse was wearing clothes, though. Their meat tends to be undressed. I bet cotton and denim sticks in their teeth. He is getting a little too much into the spirit of things, and I grimace. What else? The sharks, Kyle continues, they'd tear the body apart pretty quick. There'd be bone fragments all over their tank, though, and blood, and I don't know how quickly blood washes out of their water. Okay, anything else? 
Kyle snaps his fingers. I know, the piranhas. They would strip the body of flesh, but they leave the skeleton. People would assume the skeleton was there for show. So you might get away with it. That'd be pretty cool, actually. Hiding the body in plain sight where hundreds of people look at its skeleton every day. The piranhas, I say slowly. I love it. I stare in the direction of the aquarium and can see it play out on the movie screen in my head. The skeleton forever on display. The empty orbs of the skull staring in desperation at the people passing by. Jaws open in a never-ending cry for help. Crabs scuttling over outstretched finger bones waiting for a rescue that never comes. Forever, I whisper. Perfect. Kyle coughs. What are you talking about? Who do you plan to kill? The crazy fantasy is squashed like a soap bubble under Tina's heavy hand. No one, I say, my shoulders slumping. No one at all.